I'm Steve from This One With Cars. And right now I'm picking up this Ford Bronco that Kevin from Junkyard Digs left here. Uh, this is over at his old shop. He's now moving everything over to his new shop. He only has a couple days to get out of here. So I'm gonna pick up this Bronco and I'm going to take it home with me. Well, I didn't have very much room here between this truck and this trailer over here. So uh, it did deep bead this tire over here, pulling it sideways so that I could try to line it up with the truck. So now I'm gonna try to pull it forward. But uh, obviously the snow is being a little difficult. I can't see my cable anymore. But uh, pull it forward, see if I can get it on the truck now. Well, I got the Bronco back at the shop. I just jacked up the truck while it was on my tow truck inflated the tire luckily the bead reset itself put air in all the rest of the tires and here it is on the lift to get started now as i said i got this car from uh kevin over at junkyard digs and i don't know if he ever shot any video on this car but i know that he isn't planning on releasing any video about this truck so i actually have no idea where he got it and I don't really know what he's tried to do on it. He did tell me that it will start if you push start it and it won't run for very long. That's about all I know about it. So I need to get a battery in it. There's no battery in it right now. We'll get a battery and then see what happens. I'll need a step stool just to get up into the engine bay of this thing with it up here on the lift. So there's where the battery goes. Looks like the starter solenoid's in a really good to access place right there. Um, so if the key doesn't work, I can just connect a switch up right there. Hopefully the ground, there's the ground right there. So I'll get a battery dropped in here. Okay, here's the battery in the truck. And when I first touched this, quite a bit of spark happened. So went in and checked the key, the key was on, but you, I don't know if you can hear that or see it. I don't know if you can see that spark right there or here when I touch it. But there's quite a bit of current that's going through that when I engage this terminal. So I might need to put a cutoff switch on this. I'm not sure what is on in the truck right now, but if I can't figure that out, it'll probably drain the battery down when it's just sitting. So that's an issue that we'll have to look at at some point, but let's get it connected and see what else we find. Okay, here's the inside of this truck. You can see someone has added a tack to it. Someone has added a really terrible aftermarket steering wheel, which is broken because it looks like they may have only ever had three bolts in it. Uh, they had an aftermarket shift knob, which is just completely terrible. This is just, yeah, I mean, if you could feel this, this is really cheap plastic junk. So there's a lot of things to take a look at in here. Down beside the shifter, they did add a temp and oil pressure gauge down there as well. But right now, what I'm interested in is seeing if this will start. Let's turn the key. Okay, the radio turned on. And I could see some of the gauges did move. So maybe some of them do work. So, hit the starter, see what happens. Nothing. I think I'll put the Bronco up in the air and take a look at the starter, see what's going on down there. Okay, let's take a look. Wow, things are a lot nicer under here than I am normally dealing with. Normally I'm dealing with a lot older cars with a lot more rust and uh, just problems. Okay, so the starter is pretty simple on this vehicle. It just has a cable that comes down from the starter solenoid. So there's only one wire running to it. And I think I'll just hook up my uh, multimeter to the positive wire there and we'll see and double check that the starter is getting power when I'm hitting the key. I have my multimeter connected to the starter. You can see my positive is hooked to the positive cable that comes down from the starter solenoid and my negative is hooked right to the case of the starter. Now if you look down here, I've got my multimeter sitting down here. But an invaluable tool when you're trying to do this on your own is this is actually a Bluetooth multimeter. So I can bring it up on my phone and I can view exactly what it's saying from inside the car. So I can just leave the multimeter setting down here and take a look at my phone 
and uh, see if we've got any voltage there. Back up inside the truck now. If I turn the key and we see voltage go up on the phone there on the multimeter, then we know that the starter is getting power from the starter solenoid. And it looks like it is not. So I'm not sure that the problem is the starter. I think the problem might be the starter solenoid because as I'm turning this, uh, we are not getting any power down to the starter. So we know we have battery power here on this side of the starter solenoid. It's connected by a very short cable to the battery directly. This cable here runs down to the starter. So I'm gonna take this large screwdriver and just uh, go across both those terminals there. We'll see if the starter runs. The starter does run, but it did not turn the engine over. So we might actually have both a problem with the solenoid and a problem with the starter as well. Even if I replace the starter, I'm not going to be able to activate it from the key without getting the starter solenoid working first. So let's take a look at this first. All right, I have my test lead hooked up to the battery here, to the positive, and I'm going to hit the terminal here on the starter solenoid. We'll see if this works or not. Uh, this is uh, basically what the ignition switch would do to activate this. <laughs> So the starter solenoid actually does work. So why, uh, when we turn the key, does it not activate the starter? So we know the starter runs, but when I turn this, nothing happens. Uh, when I was stepping in, I noticed that we've got some other things down here. Not sure what these do. Maybe that was for the horn. Okay, so this one here is hooked up to the starter. Not sure, uh, ignition switch must have gone bad, but at least now we know how to hit that. Um, so now that we have the solenoid working and we know how to activate it, there wasn't a problem with it. Uh, I'll just have to get a new starter and put that in and see if that works. One trick that I've learned over the years is sometimes if you hit your starter, that'll make it work. And obviously look at all these marks on here. Someone has been hitting the starter before. With this many marks on here, I wonder if that will actually work for me. So I'm gonna grab a hammer. Looks like they were hitting it with a screwdriver. I'm not sure what was going on there, but I'm gonna get a larger hammer, hit the starter. We'll try hitting it again and see what happens. Well, I've hit the starter with a hammer. Let's try it again. Oh yeah, key doesn't work. Uh, the starter's turning, but it's not turning the engine, so I will have to put a new starter in it. Okay, I've got the starter undone. It was just two bolts, and this header is kind of in the way, so I still have to get that wire off, but now with the starter pulled back from the engine, I can get to that a whole lot easier now. So I'll get that disconnected and get the starter out of there. And not turning the engine, it's a good idea to take a look at the ring gear, make sure that there isn't any teeth missing and that's why it wasn't turning the engine, but this one looks in perfect shape. So it must've been the starter, not wanting to kick out and engage the ring gear. Well, I've got the old starter out and I've got a remanufactured one. It was very cheap, so not even worth taking this one and getting it rebuilt. There probably is a core charge for this and I'll send this back and they'll remanufacture it so that somebody else can buy it cheaply. I've got the new starter installed, so let's see what happens now. Okay, first try now with the new starter installed. Where's that switch? Cranks over. Not sure if this has a mechanical fuel pump or an electric fuel pump. So I may need to look at that first. All right, this engine does have a mechanical fuel pump. You can see it right there. And when I walked up here, I could see some fuel bubbling up. So that would explain why it's taking a little a bit longer to start up. Well, it almost started there. Go. All right, it started up. Got pretty loud exhaust on it. Smells like uh, something's burning. 
probably oh, no there's a fire under the hood there all right it must have backfired so let's get this off of here I hope it's not hot yeah that that's pretty hot Okay. You can see that filter element caught on fire there. Okay, let's try this again without the filter on there. See what happens. All right, let's start it up again. All right, let's see what our gauges say. Okay, it says we have 50 pounds of oil pressure. The tachometer seems to be working, kind of sometimes. We might have an ignition problem there as well. See if it'll idle on its own. Yep, I've got my foot off the pedal now. Let's see if it'll move forward and backwards. Yep, went forward there. Hit my blocks. See if the brakes work. Brakes work. So, I actually don't think there's a whole lot more wrong with this truck um, besides that starter. I mean, obviously, everything is broken. It's already been bypassed, but seems like it's probably a running, driving vehicle now. All right, seems to be idling pretty good. Water temperature's coming up a bit. Even the light on the oil pressure gauge started to work. So, let's try to take it for a drive. As you can see, it does run and drive, uh, if you want to call it that. Doesn't sound great. Okay, so they blocked off the vacuum advance, so obviously we know this isn't working correctly. If the truck's been sitting for a long time, I bet the cap and rotor are corroded. Back here on the carburetor, it is a manual choke, so there must be a manual choke uh, cable running inside. I think I saw one next to one of those buttons underneath the dash. Uh, they do have these vacuum ports blocked off here with those blue caps. So I'd like to give it a little tune-up. I'll be uh, connecting up the vacuum to the distributor, but I want to take a look at the rest of this too. Let's just get this rotor popped out of here. Okay, I don't know if you can see that, but there is a lot of corrosion here on the tip of the rotor. So I'm going to replace that, and I'm guessing that if that is corroded, so is the underside of the cap. Okay, you can see black lines across there where the rotor has been uh, causing corrosion due to the, the jump of the spark there on the cap. So I'm going to install a new cap. I'll just uh, disconnect each of these wires. I'm putting them onto the new cap. Uh, that way I don't get them mixed up. And then I'll show you better the corrosion on the underside of this cap. And a new cap and a new rotor should make this run a whole lot better. And I'll also do the spark plugs as well. But let's start with the cap and rotor, see how much better it runs, if any, and then go from there. All right, I got the new cap and rotor installed. And here we can see in the old cap, let's see how good I can get to that. Uh, you can see the corrosion there on those terminals. And there may have been 
uh, some misfires due to how corroded the the cap and rotor are. So I'm gonna start it up now with just these changes and we'll see if it runs any better. Okay, new rotor and cap installed. Let's see how it runs now. Yeah, that seems better already. Looks like our tack is a lot more consistent now. I don't think we have the misfiring that we did before. The truck is cold right now. But already this is a huge improvement. Now let's hook up the vacuum line to the distributor so that we get some vacuum advance. I think that this engine is so sluggish because the timing is way off. I'm sure I'll have to check the timing. Let's start with this and see what happens. That sounded a little bit better. Let's move on now to putting in new spark plugs. If this hasn't been running right, those are probably fouled or messed up. And you really can't do any tuning unless you know that your ignition system is working properly first. So I'll get to that right now. Okay, and here's the plug. You can see it's pretty wet. A lot of blackness on there. This is one of those Bosch Platinum plugs. I'm not a big fan of these plugs, especially in an older engine. I'm going to put a original type conventional spark plug uh, back in the engine. So I'll get all these pulled out, put the new ones in. Here's all the driver side plugs. You can see they all pretty much look alike. I will have to move the camera and a bunch of other stuff to do the passenger side. So I'm going to do that off camera and I'll get back to you. All the new spark plugs are installed. I want to turn this on one more time just to see how it runs with the new spark plugs only. Let's get started. Sounds like it's getting better and better. The idle speed has definitely been getting faster the more changes I've been making. Sure sounds like a V8 now. It will be kind of hard to see this when I'm doing it, but that flat spot right at the edge of my finger, move it now, that is where I need to read my timing from. And there will be marks on the harmonic balancer that'll line up with that flat piece right there. And that's what I'll be doing my timing from. So now I need to look at the harmonic balancer and find the timing marks. I am going to be doing total timing on this engine, which means I'm going to have a timing light where I can dial in exactly the degrees that I want. It's hard to see, but there are timing marks right here. And so I just need to put a mark at top dead center, which is zero degrees on this scale. And that's the one that I'm going to be using. If you don't have a fancy light like that, then just mark the degree that you want to do at idle. And then you can use your standard timing light to do it that way. Right here is a zero degree mark, so I'm going to put my white line right there. And that's what I will be matching up with the flat uh, marker up on the top of the engine. Okay, I've got my timing light here and I've set it to 34 degrees. And I'm gonna start the engine up and I will have to set the engine to about 2000 RPM so that I get the all of the advancement kicking in. And uh, then I'll look down and first I'll read how many degrees I have by uh, changing my timing up or down until the mark matches up so I can see what it's currently set to. And then I'll set it to 34 and move the distributor till I get the timing set where I want it. So I checked the timing and it's actually about right where it needs to be. So I'm going to get the distributor tightened back up. Maybe I'll take it for a test drive, see how it drives now. Before I take this truck for a test drive, I have noticed one reliability thing that I want to change and that's these battery cables. 
These are just using a clamp to hold the wire to the terminal here. And there's quite a bit of movement. Let me take that off so that you can see it. See this uh, wire is actually moving within the clamp. These weren't even that tight. And you can see on the uh, positive terminal, let me get that off. Here on the positive terminal, it's actually starting to turn white and green there, meaning that there's a lot of corrosion that's happened in between here. So I'm going to replace all these cables with types that are uh, permanently crimped or soldered on. And you could either cut this off and then to where you can get the good wiring, take the insulation off and put on your own solderable or crimped ends. This is really only should really be used to get yourself by on a fix on the road, not a permanent thing because battery acid damages these so quickly. And I have noticed that I think the truck has turned off a couple times because there wasn't a good connection here. And I've had trouble starting the truck as well where I've had to come up here and jiggle these wires in order to start it. So I'm gonna replace both cables with uh, good ones and solve that problem and get rid of that reliability issue. The new battery cables are installed and I did get a new filter element. So the truck's ready for another test drive. Get the door open, let's take it for a drive. All right, I've got it outside now. I'm about to take it for a drive. I haven't said much about it, but the rear window does not operate right now and it is down. And right now it's 21 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Let's see if the heater works at all. Well, the fan came on for a second there. Hmm. I guess the fan only runs when this is set to max. I guess I have set that to max. There is no compressor there anyways. Put that there. I guess that operates the rear window, which doesn't do anything right now. We'll see if uh, I get any heat or not. Okay, so the gas gauge says empty. So maybe I should go to the gas station first get some fuel in this so I know I'm not gonna run out probably also be good for the engine to have new fuel in it as well well the fuel gauge must not work because it only took four gallons to fill it up keep forgetting that this doesn't start the car I think that's it for today if you want to see more videos of this bronco you need to let me know in the comments below i do need to order a few things i especially need a steering wheel i need to work on that back window maybe get the heater running also in the comments let me know what you would like to see me do with this bronco there's a lot of potential here and a lot of things to work on so i'll see you next time